coming back to the driver the driver also has some amount of of course uh, the inputs are such that uh, different menu settings for example a lot of people don't like bright spot assist or they don't like the leds they find it a little annoying so those people can also disable the feature into the menu by going into the menu settings so those are the inputs which is given by the driver and uh, the inputs coming from the vehicle to the driver are of course the uh, visual cluster warnings or the led blinking so that was most that was how basically the blind spot algorithm works and uh, hopefully this is this has given an idea on how interfacing with the driver and the different components inside the vehicles um, we can move to the next feature so next feature i want to talk about is uh, front collision avoidance system now front collision avoidance is pretty self explanatory it is designed to avoid any kind of collision in front of the car and uh, this is not really a feature itself it's a group of features so there are multiple different features working at the same time to avoid the front collision and let's see how this those work okay so first of all the front collision system uh, uses two types of sensor the front long range radar and the front windshield camera it uses the different and again there is a lot of use of sensor fusion where uh, both the radar information and the camera information is extracted and uh, processed to determine target vehicle and how far the target vehicle is and typically uh, the front collision avoidance system has three different features uh, first is um, the pre collision warning then comes the autonomous emergency braking and third is evasive steering assist now different vehicles or uh, different oems have different production names for these features and there is a good chance that not all the features are present in all vehicles because uh, these vehicles are very uh, these features are expensive and they are currently only available in most of the higher trim vehicles but uh, the complete system uh, typically has these three features so let's see how how the feature actually uh, performs in a real life real life situation so let's say there is a the host vehicle is coming at a certain speed and there is a target vehicle which is currently stationary it can be stationary or it can be moving but for the sake of example we can say let's say it is stationary and what happens is the radar and the camera determine how far this target is and and based on the approach speed of the host vehicle they calculate the distance to collision total distance or the total time in how many seconds the collision will is about to happen and there will be three courses of action in this moment the first will be a collision warning that is similar to what you are seeing on this uh, image so the cluster can send out a warning to the driver and tell that hey you are approaching too fast for this stationary target so please slow down and that will happen for a few meters depending on the situation let's say the driver has failed to engage or has somehow ignored the warning the second feature will come into action and that is the aeb feature or so known as autonomous emergency braking and that feature will start engaging the abs system the anti lock brake system and it will start to apply brakes or to the vehicle and it will start to and these braking actions are typically very aggressive and there will be certainly a very aggressive deceleration and uh, usually most of the drivers by this time they get alerted and they take control uh, but let's say the driver has still failed to take control of the vehicle after the deceleration and the deceleration may or may not be enough to avoid the collision so once it's at the more dangerous area of the collision uh, the third feature comes into play which is 
called collision mitigation or evasive steering assist. So this feature, what it will try to do is, it will try to steer the vehicle away from the uh, target. And uh, there is no guarantee that the collision will be 100% avoided, but at least we can guarantee that the impact will be reduced because now the host vehicle speed has de decelerated to a very great extent. And because of the steering action, there may be very little damage done to the vehicle. Uh, as I said before, not all the features are available together on the time, but uh, more higher trim vehicles, uh, typically the uh, high trim Ford vehicles or Mercedes uh, brand vehicles uh, have all the three systems in place. And uh, I already mentioned the threat classification is um, typically done using the radar and the camera. So this is how the front collision avoidance system performs. Um, in the next slide, we will uh, see the boundary diagram and understand. Let's look at the boundary diagram for front collision system. So front collision avoidance system, uh, again, it's the typical structure of our boundary diagram. There are three components, driver, vehicle, and environment. Let's start with the environment. So environment is typically any target vehicle, any stationary objects on the road, could be like a barricade or some kind of a wall, or it could be even a pedestrian. So pedestrian detection is still not very common because uh, pedestrians are very small objects and it's very hard to detect pedestrians, but I think some systems are still capable to do that in today's uh, cars. And uh, of course, there are lane lines and different types of road geometry in the environment. So as I mentioned before, there are two sensors involved, the front main radar and the front windshield camera. So the front main radar and the camera both will try to detect any kind of target object in front of the vehicle. Once they are detected, they will be under, again transmitted to the sensor fusion algorithm. So as I said before, both the sensors are typically seeing the same object. But the reason we have multiple sensors is because not all sensors are perfect. Uh, the camera, sometimes the camera is more effective, sometimes the radar is more effective. For example, the radar doesn't work pretty well if there is a lot of fog or there is a lot of snow or some kind of physical object blocking the radar. And the camera doesn't uh, work very well when there is rain or glare or some kind of a uh, dirt which is blocking the camera. So both the sensor inputs are given into the sensor fusion algorithm. And the sensor fusion algorithm processes it and um, determines the targets and what kind of targets they are, the size of the targets. And again, the uh, Information then goes into the target tracking and selection uh, algorithm. Target tracking selection algorithm will use inputs from the vehicle model, for example, uh, vehicle speed, the steering wheel angle, and other different types of inputs. And using all those information, it will determine the threat, threat level of a target. And once that target is determined, it will go into the front collision logic. And as I said, there could be multiple features inside the front collision and it will, all the different features will act at different times. So the first, uh, first line of action will be the PCA or pre-collision warning. The pre-collision warning, once it determines that the car is about to hit a target, it will send out the cluster warning and the audio chime and want to try to warn the driver. And once, let's say the uh, driver has avoided that, and there is need for a braking action, then the AEB logic will act into place and it will start giving the inputs to the brake controls module and the brakes will be applied. And, uh, and, 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 and let's say uh, in, in this model, I haven't included the steering action, but if there was a steering action, there would be another logic of steering assist and that will be given to the steering, steering control module. So uh, the reason I did not include steering logic is 
the sterling uh, evasive sterling assist is a very uh, high end feature and it's not and that is because uh, for any kind of steering action we require a power uh, power steering control module and these are typically very expensive and only available in many high most majority of the production vehicles only have ab and pca and of course uh, from the hmi point of view there is the cluster warnings which are going directly to the driver in in the form of audio or visual or in the form of the deceleration also and the driver also has a freedom to change the menu settings uh, some of the features have different uh, sensitivity level let's say if the driver feels that the, the system is too sensitive to target vehicles uh, then you can go and change the settings for the menu and uh, accordingly adjust the feature according to your convenience but this is overall how the front collision avoidance system works and it's a very great feature it has saved millions of lives over the course of time and it, and this is also one of the features which uh, euro and cap has mandated on all model year 22 vehicles so th that's a, i think i that's a very good news because this is a very important feature to uh, avoid any kind of collision uh, fatality so those are the uh, uh, active safety features i wanted to discuss and next i wanted to talk about a little more interesting feature that is a convenience feature that's the adaptive cruise control so adaptive cruise control is typically my my favorite uh, feature uh, the reason being i am an active user of this feature and i also work on this uh, on this feature in my day to day job adaptive cruise control uh, i think i mentioned this before but let me go over is a level 2 feature uh, remember level 2 means partial automation that means the feature is able to take over only certain driving uh, actions from the driver and what this vehicle does what this feature does is the driver can set a desired set speed let's say 25 miles per hour 50 kilometers per hour and it, it, the driver can also set a gap setting a gap setting means uh, so this is how the buttons usually look like so driver can set a gap setting gap setting is how far from the lead vehicle are you comfortable to be so it will maintain the amount of distance you set in this in this gap setting button and it's going to maintain that uh, gap throughout the driving condition and uh, <clears throat> what this feature really does is the driver sets the set speed and uh, the radar and the camera again they help in tracking the target vehicles and if they feel that the target vehicle is too close or it's breaching the gap setting distance in that case the car will automatically slow down and once the target vehicle is far enough and out out of the uh, range the car will again reaccelerate and bring you back to the desired set so it's a very um, interesting feature and it's a very good feature to the reduce driver fatality especially for drivers who drive 4 to 5 hours the vehicles uh, the the acc system uh, uses typically the front radar and the front camera uh, this feature has been there uh, around for almost 10 years now and when in its initial iterations uh, it was only using radar as the main sensor but uh, since then the computer vision technology has really improved and now we also use the camera so the camera is able to do many other activities such as it. since the camera can visualize on what the type of vehicle is in front they can uh, uh, camera is able to determine the size of the vehicle and the and the type of the vehicle so it's a really interesting feature um, so Uh, adaptive cruise control is a closed loop feature and what that means is uh, there is a, so it's not just a warning feature like the pre collision or blind spot uh, detection system so the feature is able to detect a target and it's also able to act upon it so the the way it acts is it 
involves the powertrain control module and the brake control module and of course the ADAS control module in in a closed loop system and all the driver has to worry about is uh, steering the vehicle and uh, this vehicle is still level two which means it is not it does, this does not mean that the driver can completely relax uh, and take their foot out of the accelerator pedal they still need to be ready to take control because the sensors are not perfect and the detection algorithms are not perfect so uh, but this feature works pretty well in most cases and in the field and over the years this feature has evolved into many different types of additional functionalities uh, typically one of the examples is uh, intelligent speed assist that means let's say the camera is able to detect the speed limit of the road and the feature is automatically able to uh, adjust your set speed according to the speed limit so these are some of the interesting modifications which have happened over the years let's look at the uh, adaptive cruise control boundary diagram adaptive cruise control boundary diagram uh, again we have over three areas the driver vehicle and the environment from the environment there are two things first is the target vehicle which is the vehicle in front and the lane lines because the lane lines help the camera to uh, determine whether or not your car is in the line of line of collision so the environment uh, is then detected by two sensors the front windshield camera and the front radar it goes through the same love same process goes to the sense of fusion and tracking and then it goes into the mode man uh, goes into the arbitration logic and uh, what does arbitration logic mean so arbitration means it categorizes different uh, targets into different categories so there are two two logics here first is the distance control the the gap setting which the driver has maintained let's say the driver has decided to have a gap setting of 10 meters from the front car this arbitration logic makes sure that the host vehicle is always maintaining that 10 meter gap and it's it uses of course different types of inputs uh, from the vehicle can and uh, of course the steering uh, button output and based on this arbitration logic there is a talk request logic talk request logic has two two primary uh, primary tasks first is to control powertrain and second is to control uh, the brake control module or abs module so uh, the talk can so depending on how fast the vehicle has to decelerate the talk request is given to the powertrain control module and the uh, talk request uh, and let's say that talk request is not enough for braking so then the, there is a separate request which goes to the abs or the uh, brake controls module and uh, and this is the mode manager mode manager is uh, basically taking all the information from vehicle can and is taking all the information from the driver settings as i mentioned the driver is responsible to set the desired set speed let's say the driver sets 40 kilometers per hour as the set speed and the sets a gap setting of 10 meters so all that information is given from the switch uh, or the all the steering switches and it is go uh, it is given to the mode manager and the mode manager then uh, arbitrates or conveys that information to the other logics hmi point of view uh, uh, there are two things first is a cluster warning of course uh, when there is a target vehicle in front the there will be some kind of graphic showing in on your cluster to uh, let the driver know that hey this car is now about to slow down so uh, this is the reason why we are slowing down and then there is of course the steering uh, steering inputs uh, like this set in the buttons so that was adaptive cruise control and it's a very common level two feature uh, um, so the next feature we can go is the driver alert system uh, again driver alert system or driver state monitoring system it's a very interesting feature again so what this feature really does is 
it determines if the driver is paying attention to the road all the time and uh, the traditional system which we have for the past few years is just a lane keep system or basically what happens is it uses the front windshield camera and it determines the lane lines of the road and let's say the driver is crossing the lane lines uh, very frequently then the system recognizes that the driver is maybe distracted or maybe tired or drowsy and if if that is detected then a warning is given to the driver that driver alert and please uh, take rest or take a break so that was that used to be the old system and uh, uh, it was it was effective but not also so effective because lane lines uh, just crossing over lane lines is not a very good uh, feedback to determine if a dri- driver is alert or not there can be other reasons also for the driver to not be alert which is why in today's uh, technology we have a new a new sensor set which is the driver state monitoring camera and uh, this is currently uh, present in the Audi uh, system and the Tesla autopilot system also in the Ford autopilot system. so what does the, uh, the, uh, this does is there is a front camera uh, on top of the steering wheel which is constantly monitoring the driver's uh, face and using facial recognition and it determines and it looks at the driver's eyes and the dri- and the direction in which the driver is look and let's say the driver is looking at a phone or looking at somewhere else other than the road uh, and he, and the driver con- consistently does that for a certain amount of time then the cluster will give out a warning something like pay attention to the road or something like that. so um, this is a very very uh, useful feature and it's rolling sl- because of the driver state monitor cameras becoming very very useful in the coming years and as i mentioned before uh, we are slowly in the phase of transferring from level 2 to level 3 automation and in level 3 systems these will be particularly very useful because even though the car is capable of doing all the driving in level 3 system but the driver is still responsible to pay attention and this one driver state monitoring camera is the uh, kind of like a system which policing system which is making sure that the driver is still let into the car and not letting the car do all the tasks so the driver alert system is is a pretty uh, simple system as i said uh, it typically involves the the environment is basically the lane markers and the road attributes the front vision system or the front windshield camera looks at the lane lines and tries to determine uh, whether the car is in, within the limits of the lane lines so that information goes into a sensor signal processing and sensing model uh, this is typically the uh, camera vision computer vision detection and that information is goes into the lane keep system logic so lane keep system is another different feature uh, which we'll briefly touch upon uh, lane keep system is responsible to detect the lane lines and maintain the car within the bounds of the lane lines and that's why both the systems use a similar so the signal processing model goes to the lane keep system and then all that information goes to uh, another algorithm called the impairment or distraction monitor so what this does is it keeps a statistical count of how many times the driver has been distracted from the start of the vehicle and there is a certain threshold once that threshold is crossed like let's say the driver has crossed the lane lines 20 times in a given distance and based on that statistical approach the uh, distraction uh, is determined on, on how distracted the driver is this system is currently also taking the input from the driver state camera as i said the driver monitoring camera will give the a uh, distraction rate on like where the driver is looking and the driver is currently not uh, paying attention so all that information is collected and it goes to the warning manager this warning manager is th- responsible to send out the can output uh, 
So warning manager determines what type of warning should we give to the uh, driver. Let's say the driver is crossing the lane lines very frequently, then there will be something like take rest or pay attention, something like that. There will be a warning. If the driver is not looking at the road or is looking somewhere other than the road, then the warning message will be different. So the warning manager determines what kind of warning to be sent out to the driver. And the mode manager, of course, is consists of all the settings which the driver has selected. So in some cars, the driver can also ha add custom messages on the warning. You know, they can add a visual warning or an audio warning. So they can customize that. So all that information is stored in the mode manager. And then there's the CAN output. The CAN output is the cluster warning or cluster chime. So I think I've covered most of the boundary diagram. So yeah, that is how, and then the driver also interacts. The driver input is, of course, the driver state monitoring camera where whether or not the drivers uh, also the lane, lane uh, behavior of the driver on how well the driver is following the lanes. So those are the different inputs from the driver to the vehicle system. So uh, in future, we will have more modifications. Some of the ideas are, let's say the driver is distracted, then the navigation system can also uh, search the nearest rest area or a coffee shop, and it can automatically send that information on the navigation route. So these are some of the future modifications which can happen on this system uh, with more, more robust connectivity and more robust internet system. We can have that kind of capability.